All right, so in uh, this video, we're doing optimization problems. Uh, previously, we've done optimization problems, but we've always known what the function was. Uh, this time, we're going to do some optimization problems where we need to uh, create the function ourselves. So typically, this is going to be some sort of word problem. You're going to have to interpret that word problem and then come up with a function that you can optimize. Uh, let's take a look at one. Uh, so here's our uh, so these questions are all very, very similar in, in certain ways. Uh, one of them is that you have to actually interpret the question itself. Now, this is asking for a stained glass window with a that is in the shape of a rectangle with a semicircle on top. So that's a stained glass window that looks like this rectangle with, with a semicircle on top. You get the idea. Alright, so there's nothing there. Now, the uh, it says if the perimeter is 6 metres, so all the way around that shape, along this, around the semicircle, along this, and down this, yeah, the perimeter equals 6 metres. Okay. Uh, find the dimensions of the window with the largest area. Okay, so step one, draw a diagram. We've got a diagram. Step two. Uh, what are we trying to optimize? Now, in all of these questions, it's going to say something like uh, largest something or smallest something. We're trying to optimize something. So what are we trying to optimize? In this case, we're trying to optimize the area. Okay, so step three, I guess. Now, let's write what we're trying to optimize. Area. Step three. Right basic area formula for this shape. Okay, so we know that the area of this shape area is going to be equal to now whatever the dimensions of this uh, rectangle are plus whatever the dimensions of that semicircle are. Okay, so the area of that shape is equal to uh, the area of the rectangle. This is a really basic formula. We'll, we'll tidy this up in a minute. Plus the area of the semicircle. Okay, so the total area is equal to the area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. It's at this stage that we probably need to realize that, probably should have realized this before, uh, there's two different things that we need to, two dimensions of this shape that we need to deal with. One is what I'm going to call the height, and that's just the height of the rectangle itself. And one is the width of it. Now, I'm not actually going to deal with the width, I'm actually going to deal with this, which I'm going to call R for radius. Now, obviously, with radius is half of the uh, width. Now I'm going to do that because I feel that if I use the width, it's going to make a bit of a mess of my um, semicircle formula. Okay, so let's think a little bit now about fixing up this area formula. Now the area of the rectangle is going to be height times width, which is height times 2R. Height times 2R plus the area of the semi-circle, semi which is going to be um, pi r squared, that gives me a full circle, divided by 2. That will give me a semicircle. So pi r squared um, divided by 2. Okay, we're getting pretty close. Uh, we can probably just tidy that up a bit. 2hr plus pi r squared on 2. Now, with all of these optimization problems when the function is unknown, you're always going to run into this problem where you're trying to optimize something, the area, but you end up here where you've got uh, two variables, h and r. That's a problem for us. Uh, we need to find some way that h and r are, are related, I guess. Uh, so let's think a little bit about how are H and R related. Now the secret, and this is really step four, I guess. Step four. H 
how are the two variables related? Now they're related by this extra piece of information in our uh, question. If the perimeter is six meters. So our H and our R are directly related by the fact that the perimeter is limited to an exact value, six meters. So we can now write some sort of formula and you'll always write this second formula that allows you to, to uh, relate these two variables. So the perimeter here is equal to, and now let's think about what our perimeter is equal to. Our perimeter is equal to H plus two R's plus another H, so H, two R's, a H, plus, now the circumference of this semicircle, remember that the circumference is pi D, which is, or another way you can think of it is two pi R, so two pi R divided by two, so two pi R, that gives you a full circle, and then if you divide it by two, that'll give you a semicircle. And then if we look at this, those twos cancel each other out. So the circumference of a semicircle is simply pi r. Pi r. We are getting really close here. We can now say that six is equal to h plus h, 2h, plus 2r plus pi r, um, 2 plus pi r. Okay, uh, looking good, looking good. Now we need to make some sort of decision. Do I want to rewrite this formula, 6 equals 2h plus... 2, pi, 2 plus pi bracket r, do I want to rewrite this in terms of h or in terms of r? Because if I can make h or r the subject, uh, I can put it straight back into uh, straight into this area formula. Now looking at this, if I make uh, h the subject, that means I'll replace that h. Because I'll know that h is equal to something, and I'll be able to put it in there. If I make r the subject, I'll have to replace this with some sort of weird formula, and I'll have to replace this squared with some sort of weird formula. Now, I know it sounds like, oh, let's just do something and throw it in there. Time in reconnaissance is seldom wasted. So if you take a minute and think, okay, which one's the best one to use here? Some, either you'll make it really easy on yourself, or you'll turn the whole thing into a big mess. So I'm going to make H uh, the subject, because I want to replace H. Okay, so making h the subject, I'll have 6 minus 2 plus pi r equals 2h, oops, not capital H, equals 2h, and then I can divide that whole thing by 2. 6 minus 2 plus pi r all over 2 equals h. So now I know that h is equal to 6 minus 2 plus pi r all over 2. Okay, real mess here. Let's see where we go next. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can take this whole formula, 6 minus 2 plus pi bracket r over 2 equals h, and we can replace that h that already exists there. This is going to be a real monster of a mess. So we're going to put it there somewhere. So, area equals 2 times 6 minus 2 plus pi r uh, over 2 times r plus pi r squared on 2. Whew. This is good though. You can see that we're optimizing the area and now we have a full formula in terms of R. Now all we need to do is find a turning point for this function. 
Now, uh, I might try to tidy up this function a little bit. It's probably, I guess, optional because you can probably chug this straight into your calculator. Let's see what we can do anyway. Area equals, those twos are going to cancel each other out, which is going to leave me with bracket 6 minus 2 plus pi r um, times r plus pi r squared on 2. Now if I expand this set of brackets, I'll end up with 6r minus, uh, I might put that r in the front, r times r is r squared, 2 plus pi, plus pi r squared on 2. It's gotten to be a real mess here. We've got area equals 6r minus r squared bracket 2 plus pi, plus pi r squared on 2. We're going to get there though. Area equals 6r minus 2r squared minus pi r squared uh, plus pi r squared on 2. Now, um, you can see these are all like terms. Minus 2r squared minus pi r squared plus pi r squared on 2. They're all r squareds. Let's approximate pi as a decimal. Uh, that's going to make our life really, really easy here. Now, when we do that, we end up, when we group this term, this term, and this term, we get negative 3.57 r squared. Negative 3.57 r squared. And we get 6r. That's something we can really work with. Um, all of the work that we've done so far has really been building to this point area equals 6r minus 3.57r squared. Now we should be able to optimize that. We should be able to find a point uh, where area is at a maximum. You can see that this is a uh, negative quadratic, so it is going to go up towards a maximum. To find the turning point of that, uh, that'll give us our maximum. We obviously need to derive it, so a dash is equal to uh, 6 minus 2 times 3.57 which is 7.14 r. Now let the a dash equal 0 that way we can find the turning point 6 minus 7.14 r. Now to solve that it's going to end up being uh, r will be equal to 6 over 7.14 I'm skipping a step there, but uh, you guys should be able to figure that one out. 6 divided by 7.14. And that gives me an answer. R equals, uh, let's take another look, 0 0.83, let's say 0 0.837. That's pretty awesome. That's something we need. Now we were asked in this question to find the dimensions of the window with the largest area. We weren't asked to find the largest area, the dimensions of the window with the largest area. We have one now. We know that radius of this thing is uh, 0 0.837. Now obviously we can find that length there by doubling that number. So that's going to be 1.674. Now we have one of the dimensions. We have that width along there. We just need to find that height. And we can do that by putting 1.674 into that equation. Because we know that height is equal to 6 minus 2 plus pi r over 2. I'm going to put that in there now. And we'll see what we get. Uh, sorry, I'm going to put 0 0.837 into there now. Now when I do that, I'm going to get a height of 0 0.848. Uh, I'm just going to draw that in there. 0 0.848. Okay, you can see that this um, stained glass window is going to look really silly. It's twice as, as wide as it is high. 
if you actually drew the thing, it would look something like like this. Uh, which isn't much of a stained glass window. As, uh, as often is the case with these things, when you're doing an optimization problem, the answer that gives you the optimal area or optimal perimeter or optimal whatever it might be, might also be out of question just because it looks silly or it's unworkable for some other reason. Um, okay. Okay, there's been a lot going on here, but the steps are pretty clear. Read a question. Draw a diagram. Figure out what you're trying to optimize. In this case, we were trying to optimize area. The next step was to write a basic area formula. Area is equal to the area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. And we kind of played with that a little bit up to that point. Now, the problem, of course, when you do that is that you have two variables, a h and an r. Now, when that happens, um, find a way that those two variables are related. You can always find some sort of formula that relates them and you can make one of them the subject. In this case, we made H the subject. There we go. Once you've made H the subject, you can plug it back into your original formula, keep going until you end up with a nice, neat formula, something that looks like that. Derive, find the turning point, and then once you have something, you should be able to find the other something. Whew, this has been a long one, guys. Thank you very much. Sorry for the mess on the screen there. Uh, please make sure that you work through some of these modeling and problem solving questions. Uh, they're big ones and it's really what optimization is all about.